You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Hello, this is Matt from the Explorers Podcast. I want to invite you to join me on the voyages and journeys of the most famous explorers in the history of the world. These are the thrilling and captivating stories of Magellan, Shackleton, Lewis and Clark, and so many other famous and not so famous adventurers from throughout history. Go to explorerspodcast.com or just look us up on your podcast app. That's the Explorers Podcast. Hey there, this is Anne from the Vulgar History Podcast, and my friends Katie and Nathan wanted me to let you know that they curse on this show. So if you don't like that, maybe this isn't the show for you. But if you do like a show about women from Tudor history and a host who curses a lot, you might also like my show, Vulgar History. Recently, I just did a 10-part series on Mary Queen of Scots where we asked the really important questions. Like, did you know giving gifts was her love language? Or that she preferred her eggs scrambled after a long night of escaping from her enemies? Anyway, that's my show, Vulgar History. But first, here's Katie and Nathan and the Queen's Podcast. Hi, I'm Katie. And this is Nathan. And you're listening to Queens, the podcast about badass women in history. Hello out there. And We're back. <laughs> we are back for part three of Anne Boleyn. The part where she lives happily ever after. Uh, <laughs> not. <laughs> anyway. So where we left off on the last episode was in the fall of 1533 and Anne had just married Henry and then nine months later had her little baby Elizabeth. Probably more like seven and a half months yeah, later. Yeah, <laughs> it was like she had her a little early. <laughs> but yeah, so after all this... And Henry's like, definitely going to get a son out of this. Nope. After all the promises of seven years, if you're going to get a son, she births a daughter. This would have been a huge disappointment to Henry. because but he, it was a sign that she could survive labor. She could yes. give birth to a healthy child. So, so he was still keeping his fingers was a, crossed. It was a setback, but it wasn't like... The damnation. end. Yeah. Yeah. He, Yet. he knew that she could have kids and it's possible that he could, she could have a baby boy. Yeah. Elizabeth's christening was a big fucking to do. As was customary, Anne didn't attend the christening. But like everyone else who was anybody in England was there. Big you know, fucking deal. It was a big fucking deal. <laughs> Even though Henry obviously wanted a son, he still had to pull out all the stops for this because he was still fighting for people in his own country and throughout the whole of Europe to recognize this child as being legitimate. Baby. Well, because he still had, because Catherine of Aragon was still alive, though. Yeah. So everyone's and like, he- well, <laughs> this is a bastard because your wife is still, your other wife is still alive. <laughs> She's still so living. he had to do this whole big thing to be like, look at all the gold. Don't pay attention to my other wife. Right. Uh, shush, 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 you and know. thus the baby drama mama ensues. <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> this brings us to the acts of secession. Yeah. Um, and and even though Henry had already made it clear that he doesn't really believe his daughter from Catherine Mary to be his, like, legitimate heir, he needed to, like... He needed to make it law. Put it down in and writing. Be, and be like, my heirs or my children with Anne. Because, it's interesting, there's this Latin phrase, which I don't know what it is. It means married in good faith or in good faith. And so that's what they still viewed Mary as. Like, okay, yeah, you're a bastard, but your parents thought they were married when you were conceived. So you were conceived in good faith. So a lot of people were like, well, she should still be the heir regardless. So the act of succession was really important for him to be like, nope, my children with Anne. They are the next kings and queens of this country. And that's like a huge slap in the face to Mary. Yeah, who'd been raised. Her, at this point, she's like, what, 17, 18, Yeah, she's no like spring that. chick. She's, she, I mean, in terms of like mid, like. <laughs> but she thought like her whole life, like you are a princess. And now yeah. like. No. No, you're not. This little baby that was just born yesterday is now going to take over. So let's talk about Anne and Mary's relationship. So there's just something about Mary. <laughs> and that something is she hates Anne Boleyn. <laughs> That's, that might be an understatement. <gasps> oh my god. She calls her like the concubine, the whore. When she's feeling nice, <clears throat> she calls her the mistress Anne. And I, and I also read whenever she felt nice too, she would call her Madam Pembroke. Which is like oh, because she her was title Marquess, at the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, she was the Marquess of Pembroke. 
And also, Anne was pretty horrible to her stepdaughter. There were a lot of not nice things that she did. I do honestly believe, though, that that came from a place of insecurity. Fear. Like, she wasn't just a mean person, but she would be eaten, you know? Like, yeah, kill she would be killed. You she know? was afraid that Mary would be able to take the reins and get back the crown, essentially. And um, Mary could have helped herself, too, by being just like, a little respectful no, to Anne. No, 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 because they're two hard-headed they're women. They're two <laughs> hard-headed women. All the women in this, this story are fucking hard-headed. After Elizabeth was born, you know, she gets her own household as, like, now the heir to the throne. Mary is stripped of her title and is like, you're going to go be lady to waiting, lady in waiting to this infant. Again, another slap in the fucking face. One time, Anne did, like, try to make nice with Mary. Yeah, this is a really interesting story. So, like, in 1534, yeah, Elizabeth was one years old and Mary was 18. And Anne comes to visit Elizabeth because, you know, Elizabeth has her own fucking pad. Yeah. <laughs> and Anne is like... Look, Mary, if you just come and visit with me and be nice to me, I will make sure the king invites you to come back to court. You can have your old life. You can, you know, be a fucking, like, my lady in waiting, live at court, and everything will be great. And then Mary's like, uh, I'm a teenager, so fuck you. Nope, I don't like you. She was like, I, the only person, I'm sorry, the only. You're, you're not, not my, my real mom. mom. You're not my real mom. My mom's <laughs> the queen. Um, And then another time, this one I thought was particularly harsh um so they're in chapel and one of Anne's ladies is like omg mary acknowledged you because like whenever the queen walks in everybody kind of like bows or whatever and usually when mary was there she wouldn't do that when Anne walked in but uh, one of her ladies is like i saw her acknowledge you she bowed when you came in she curtsied whatever and Anne is just like fucking finally Yes! I think Mary's shoes were untied, and she just bent down to tie them so again. So, <laughs> Anne sends Mary... It's likely. That's, that's very likely. Did Tudor shoes have no, laces? Shh, Okay, Katie. anyway. Um, so, Anne writes Mary <laughs> this letter being like, I am so happy to hear that you finally recognize me as queen. Oh my god, this is the start of a beautiful relationship. We're going to be best friends. Heart emoji, smiley face emoji, XOXOXO. And then Mary writes back and she's like, um, the servant who delivered this letter must have been confused, aka drunk. Because she said it was a letter from the queen, but my mother is the queen of England. And she's not here. Yeah. She's, she's, you're not the queen, bitch. So Mary hadn't acknowledged her at all. And Anne was uh, noted to say... <laughs> Damn her proud Spanish blood. I think Anne was like, damn. If you ever thought you had a bad relationship with your stepmother. <laughs> this Look is at Anne. a whole Anne. different situation. Exactly. So, so there, th- there yeah. were rumors that, that actually that Anne had poisoned Mary. Or that she like said that if Henry ever goes out of the country and leaves her as regent, that she would poison Mary. I don't. I think if Anne ever said that, it was like. Okay, so something let's just get out of the way about Anne right now. She's she's got a big fucking mouth on oh, her. Oh yeah, no, she she will she will tell it like it is. And she she would say things in like the heat of the moment that she didn't necessarily mean. Like, I'm gonna poison my stepdaughter, you know? And she's of course not gonna fucking do it. Yeah. She's gonna start a war and stuff like that. Yeah. In her defense, she was queen. Yeah, at this point she still thinks she's, queen. she's untouchable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hmm. We'll get we'll get to that later. So but let's talk about Anne. As queen, because I feel like you don't hear about that a lot. You hear about her rise and her fall. But in the short time that she was queen, she actually did some cool shit. I think if she would have been given a chance, she would have been a really fierce regent. Like whenever, like when Henry went out, uh, like to go warring back whenever Catherine of Aragon and him were like first married. Remember that story about she like killed one of their, I think it was Scottish enemies. Yeah. And she wanted to send his head. To Henry, to him, yeah, and everyone was like, "How about you just send his coat or something instead?" Like, no, bitch. <laughs> and um, she was like, "Ugh, you Englishmen are so weak." I think, <laughs> given the chance, Anne would have shown that same kind of fierceness, but she never got to. No, she wasn't queen for very long. And also, Henry, he had advisors. He wasn't looking for a strong companion to rule with him No, anymore. he already had everything set in place. He wasn't looking for that. Like, he used to need that. 
He was looking for a doting wife to pop out some babies. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so she she really wanted to try her hand at that, but she never got a chance. And also focused on trying to help the poor, which really doesn't get talked about nearly enough. Yeah, while her homeboy Cromwell is trying to tear down all these monasteries and putting the money into his own pockets and, you know, his bro's pockets, Anne is like, okay, wait. Wait, bitch. Hold, hold on a on, minute. On. We, we gotta we gotta reevaluate this, and maybe these monasteries could possibly be used as hospitals, homeless shelters. Well, because thinking about it, monasteries and abbeys and stuff like that, I mean, at this point, that's where single mothers went to help for help. That's where orphans went. That's where like, and now they're just tearing them down. It's like, where are these nuns Why gonna go? Could... Where are these monks? And that gonna makes go? me where that these... makes me also think that like. There's a lot of... She was th- one of the only people stepping up being yeah, like, con- hey. Yeah, contributing, being like, you're wasting this space. Yeah. You could use this for something good. Which... Unfortunately, sh- they, they were just like, shh. <laughs> nice try. And put the money in their pockets. <laughs> Anne was also very interested in the Protestant Reformation. Yeah, she um, went hard on the new ideas that were coming up at that time about yeah. religion. Well, she went hard subtly. Because yeah, she was discreet. Henry, like, a lot of people peg him as, like, the king for the Reformation, but no. Like we discussed in the last episode, like, he was a Catholic at heart. Like, he was still burning people as heretics that were, like, bringing Martin Luther's, like, reformation over. Yeah, so he was still doing it. He was still a Catholic at heart. He just didn't want Rome to have the power to tell him what to do. He didn't want somebody telling him what to do. But Anne actually had a chaplain, and he was Protestant. Yeah. (laughs) And his name was Matthew Parker. Also, Anne was able to intervene on this, like, there was this one guy in prison that got caught with heretical oh, books. Yeah, I read this. And, like, Cardinal Wolsey had put him in jail. So he had been in jail for, like, years at this point. And Anne was able to get him, like, convince Cromwell to let him out of jail. She was just like, he just had some books. Let him go. <laughs> let him go. She really wanted there to be a publication of the Bible in English, which at that time was, like, Radical heresy. So just any commoner can read it. Yeah. Like thing is, was Rome was so powerful because they were the only ones that read and spoke Latin. Center of the world, and they were you know the the preachers and everything for Rome were the only ones that spoke Latin. So you just had to kind of, you could you didn't have the opportunity to read it and interpret it how you and your heart felt it felt was. It. Yeah, and that's what Anne wanted. She wanted the people to be able to read it and feel it themselves and interpret it themselves. And that was very dangerous and radical at this time. Oh, absolutely. Now that seems like, you know, any, Common ho- any hotel you stay in, has, I mean, it still <laughs> might not be super easy to read because, <laughs> but like the, at that time it was very radical. So people don't, I mean, people talk about the Reformation part a lot, but I feel like she doesn't get enough credit for no, trying to be a good queen, and but just not getting a whole lot done. So th- three months after Elizabeth is born, oh, wait. Anne is pregnant again. Oh, yay! Booyah. <laughs> so Henry and Anne are still like super in love, but they fight. They're both hard-headed, loud-mouthed people. Yeah, and, and he's also probably sleeping with her relatives, mm. um, her cousins, Madge and Mary. So, I'm not sure. Not, not Mary Shelton, not Mary. So, there's Margaret and Mary Shelton, and they were sisters, which those names are too similar. Give yeah. them different names. One or both of them was the king's mistress. We're not yeah. We don't know which sure. one. <laughs> it's, I think most people agree it was Margaret. It's fucking confusing. Whatever. Um... <laughs> Anne's relative, her uncle, was the Duke of Norfolk. He knew that the king was going to take mistresses when Anne was pregnant. That was almost like the right of being a king, you yeah, know? Yeah, it is. And so, rather than him take a mistress from, like, an opposing family, they were, like, pushing their own peeps on him yeah, to be, like... Yeah, so Madge was being pushed by the Duke of Norfolk. Yeah. Yeah. The history of their relationship or, like, the documents of their relationship. There's so many different accounts. It's so contradictory, but you also have to remember the people that wrote this stuff down. Like, a lot of their relationship is by Chapuis, the Spanish ambassador. So, of course, he's going to say they fight and they hate each other, mm-hmm. all, you know, and that the king's so unhappy. And a lot of this stuff is written, like, 20 years after anything, yeah. <laughs> after all this happened. But what we do know is she's pregnant with a second child at this time, and Henry is still fighting tooth and nail to have royal houses of other countries of other places in Europe to recognize her as like the lawful queen he's having A's and H's like the intertwined A and H symbol like engraved 
every fucking wear at every palace. You don't do that for someone that you're like that you don't love. you're kind of on the outs with. Yeah. But there were stories of their famous fights, which I <clears throat> do believe. I, I really genuinely believe it because first off, they were newlyweds. They'd only been married for like a year or two. But remember they'd also at this point they've been together for ten years. Yeah, well, together ish. Yeah. But like yeah. not really together, like married under the same roof. Yeah. And she's pregnant. You know, like they were both ooh. hot-headed. <laughs> Anne's got that fucking mouth on her, and I think to be married to Henry, like she had that fucking mouth on her, and they were Henry wants a submissive woman. Yeah, when they were just dating, and he was just courting her, he was like, "Ha ha, a woman who will banter with me." But now that he's she's his wife, he's like, oh. Oh. he's like, this is exhausting. <laughs> like, fucking shut your mouth. Oh, a woman has an opinion. Catherine of Aragon would shut her mouth. You know, and what? But not talk Anne. Back. <laughs> but she was also raised to be a queen. Yeah, she had been told her whole life, like, if you want to get shit done, you want the king to like do what you want him to do. You've got to almost manipulate him, play and, nice, like, but play his game or whatever. Mm-hmm. No one ever told Anne that she wasn't raised to be a queen. She no. was raised to be like a knight's wife or some shit. Yeah. You know, like. So shortly after she has her first miscarriage, with the, this just feels like the beginning of the end. History's really not sure about when this happens, but it seems like it was pretty far along in the pregnancy. Yeah. Okay. So she like it seems like she got pregnant around like November, December, and it seems like she lost the baby around July, fifteen thirty four. So she would have been pretty far along. Yeah, so. Like there are some accounts that think it happened. Maybe a month or so prior because like, and like they just like, the only reason people even figured out was because like she doesn't look pregnant anymore or whatever. But Uh, I mean, either way, she was like more than halfway done and she had a miscarriage. And this was around the time that Henry like canceled a trip to France. Yeah. That's how we know for sure that it happened because he was supposed to go to France and he canceled it. Um, And that was in July of 1534. And there are some sources that say that they believe it was a phantom pregnancy like Catherine of Aragon had. Oh, I don't buy that at all. I don't either. I think the stress on her may have been great at that point to have a son, but I don't think it was that it wasn't like bad. it was when Catherine had her phantom pregnancy uh, after how many miscarriages exactly. <laughs> like she had how many miscarriages exactly <laughs> have you ever wondered what really happened to amelia Earhart or the lost colony of roanoke do you ever find yourself scouring the internet for vicious victorians and their murders by gaslight or perhaps You're just sick and tired of women being constantly misrepresented or plain lied about throughout history. If so, join me, Katie Charlwood, history harlot and reader of books on Who Did What Now, the history podcast that's not your history class, part of the Area of Media Network, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. Adios, au revoir, au revoir, revoir, my friends. Bye-bye. I'll be seeing you. Throughout history, royals across the world were notorious for incest. They married their own relatives in order to consolidate power and keep their blood blue. But they were oblivious to the havoc all this inbreeding was having on the health of their offspring. From Egyptian pharaohs marrying their own sisters to the Habsburgs' notoriously oversized lower jaws, I explore the most shocking incestuous relationships and tragically inbred individuals in royal history. And that's just episode one. On the History Tea Time podcast, I profile remarkable queens and LGBTQ plus royals, explore royal family trees, and delve into women's medical history and other fascinating topics. I'm Lindsay Holiday, and I'm spilling the tea on history. Join me every Tuesday for new episodes of the History Tea Time podcast, wherever fine podcasts are enjoyed. So... This must all be starting to feel really familiar to Henry. Flashbacks. Remember, his first wife's miscarriage or stillbirth, whatever it was, was 24 years ago at this point. So quite a while. This is 24 years going that he's been trying to have a legitimate living baby boy. And I mean, he's had 
three kids that have lived so far, but one still, being a bastard. Af- af- and then two daughters, but like after trying for... He must kind of start feeling like, I must be cursed again, because he's only got three living children after this many years of... Well, so there are it, some people that think that um, Mary Boleyn and sister had a couple of kids with him, but yeah. he didn't recognize those kids, so dot, dot, dot. We won't count them. <laughs> Even though miscarriages were really common in that day, I think this really, like, put the fear of God in Anne. I mean, she'd been promising that she would have a baby boy and that he would have a legitimate heir that was a son for years and years. But it's fucked up. Years it's and so years. fucked up. Like, she, like, started promising, I'll give you a son. 10 years ago at this point, you know, whenever she was like 23 or whatever. And she thought, oh, we'll be married by the time I'm 24, maybe 25. But, but in, instead, hi- like, in his mind, like 31 or something. in his mind, he's got another wife and she can't give him a son and, and she's mouthy and she's, she just speaks her mind and that's not, he just wasn't. Some believe this is good. when he started to be like, what did I do this all for then mm. if she hasn't even given me a son yet? Yeah. So what was he cursed? Did he just have, like, really bad luck? Syphilis? Blood disease? What? There is a group of people that believe he had syphilis, though I feel like that's been pretty much... Um, Debunked. Yeah. I mean, the things that back it up is that um, women with syphilis miscarry at a higher rate, mm. and then the babies that they do have are usually die in infancy or are born very, very sick. But, I mean, even at the time, whenever you had syphilis, there was extensive treatments, and they probably would have they, documented that with the king. They, yeah, they, it was mercury treatments, no less. Yeah. So uh-huh. he would have been out of commission. And then Catherine and probably would have dead had, afterwards. <laughs> and Catherine would have had to have had those yeah. treatments, too, you know? And there's no documentation of that. This theory, I feel, is much more likely. There's a blood group, there's a blood group called Kell Positive, K-E-L-L. So it's like if a Kell positive man impregnates a woman with Kell negative blood, their first child is usually fine because the, the woman's blood has never been introduced uh-huh. to Kell positive blood before. But by the time she gets pregnant the second time, her body has built up antibodies to Kell positive blood. So the Kell negative person... So basically if she gets pregnant with a fetus that is going to also be Kell positive, her body will treat it like a disease. So what treat it, it does, like a virus. What it does is the, it, yeah. when you're Kell positive, the mom's antibodies in her body kill all of the red bu- blood cells mm-hmm. in the baby. So that would explain all the miscarriages. Yeah. And why Anne was able to have one baby just fine like that, and then the rest, you know, was miscarriage after miscarriage. And it would explain why... Catherine had so many miscarriages, but then, like, it's like, oh, but Catherine had Mary, and that wasn't her first baby. Well, maybe Mary was Kel negative, negative. you know, just like her mom, you know? So that is... Very, very interesting theory, and I think that that is something that you could prove, or it could just be karma. It could could also just be horrible luck, or... He divorced his first wife because she couldn't have a son, and then God was like... Oh, fuck you. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> you ain't never going to have a baby son. And I'm going to make your baby with this crazy wife that you're starting to hate. Be right the now. Best queen that ever was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so they are really grieving after that first mis- I mean, a miscarriage is not an easy thing to deal with. No. <laughs> but there were rumors that Henry was starting to ask Cromwell, like, can you look into how I can leave Anne without going back to Catherine. Surprise, surprise. Thomas Cromwell was probably like, let me figure it out. Like, there's one documented moment where they got in a really big fight about, like, him having mistresses. And he tells Anne uh, that she should shut her eyes and endure it like her betters did before her. Oh, that sounds healthy. Can you... I'm just... (laughs) Well, I'm just trying to imagine my husband ever saying something like that to I'm me. Like, or me ever saying something like that to my husband. Like, like bitch, she... I want to punch you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> so the stress of it is really starting to affect her. And there are some some notes, like, in history that say that she started to age rapidly. And, I mean, it you see that with toll. presidents. You see that, like, with... Yeah. Look at Barack Obama at year one and year three. I mean, look at, any, look at any yeah. president year one, if they have two terms. And it's exactly. like year one and year three, they're, like, totally different. But after this... This is when Henry passed a law called the uh, Treason Act, or the Act of Supremacy. Mm-hmm. They go by both terms. And it meant that if you spoke out about the next it had lots line of, and the king... It had lots of caveats in it. But, like, the gist of it was, 
I am the most supreme person in the world, as far as any of you in the country are concerned. I don't answer to, I'm, you know, I'm above the Pope. Because he's the Pope. <laughs> I am above the Pope. I make the better pasta. Henry VIII made famously great pasta. But um, <laughs> if you even speak of the death of the king, kilt. Um, off with your head. Off with your head. If you say that Anne is not the queen and her descendants aren't the rightful heirs. Off with your head. Off with your head, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna die if you speak out And so, and, and this was a big fucking deal, and there were lots of people that offed with their heads. Yeah, you know? so, so the main shit here is that if you denied that the king was the head of the church... Executed. Dead. Killed. <laughs> um, it was um, like called it was called taking, taking the oath yeah so it was like are you gonna take the oath and most people in the country were like yeah, Duh. I'll, I'll take the fucking <laughs> oath yeah i'm not trying to get my head cut off thomas moore who we mentioned slightly in the last episode kilt um there was this woman named elizabeth, elizabeth barton, barton mm-hmm. who she was maybe we'll do an episode about her one fascinating day. yeah she was fascinating long um, story short she kilt. got sick of something and she accused the well she didn't even accuse him she just said something that could be well no she said no well, no, she didn't say something that could be construed. She said that if you marry this woman, you will be dead in two years or something like that. And so he was like, well, you'll be dead now. <laughs> How about them apples? You know? <laughs> Brutal. So this guy named Bishop Fisher, who the Pope even made a cardinal in hopes that yes! he was saving his life. He was in jail and he was about to get killed. And so the Pope was like, he's a cardinal, so you can't kill him now. Like granted him being a cardinal. And the king was like, Go ahead and send his cardinal hats. We'll put it on his shoulder. Because, like, that Ooh. meant, like, because his head is going to be gone. I could be, like, fucking that quote up. But you get the gist. It meant, he's going to be killed. <laughs> he's going to be killed. So, side note, killed. there may have been another miscarriage in 1535. But if so, it was kept se- super secret. But there's just, there was enough notes out there of, like, maybe this had happened in 1535. If so, it would have been, like, really, really early on. Yeah, and supposedly at this point, Anne had made some comments to all the people in, around her, a.k.a. her ladies-in-waiting. And <laughs> she was like, eh, he don't know how to, he don't know how to get it right, get it tight. Like, he she was is like, not good in bed. She's like, He's he doesn't not- know how to please a woman. Why did she say that? That is the worst thing that you could do. I wonder if it was like again, like there was a mistress situation, and she was just like, "Fine, yeah. whatever. She can have him. He doesn't know how to please anybody anyway." But oh my god, people are getting their heads fucking cut off for saying anything Stop for bad one about. Moment. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. This woman's got a mouth on hey, her. Yeah, and I love her for it. I'm glad she's speaking up. But if you're in those I, situations, you maybe should keep your mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, Catherine of Aragon never would have said something like that. And maybe, uh, well, 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 yeah, <laughs> we'll discuss <laughs> anyway. So they go on summer progress. Um, we've talked about royal progresses before, like in lots of episodes. It's like basically the king and the queen gather their posse and they ride around the countryside and stop like in different regions of the country. So the people can see them. It's a meet and greet. It's a meet and greet. It is. <laughs> So they went to many different noble households. But, but the most notable is the story is their stop at Wolf Hall. Yeah. And the um, this Wolf is, Hall is owned by the Seymour family. Which uh, pretty much is where Jane Seymour came to his attention. Yeah. I mean, Jane Seymour had been around for a really... She was a lady in waiting to Catherine of Aragon. Yeah. And she was Catholic, too. Yeah. And she's a, she's a supporter of the old faith. As they call it. And then she was a lady in waiting to Catherine and then Anne Boleyn. So she and was already so she'd in the been circle. around, but this is the first time that it's really noted that Henry was like, Hey, find out more about that that Seymour chick. I wanna I wanna know what she's into. And the funniest thing about Jane and Anne is they are polar they opposites. They could not be more opposite. Anne is like dark complexion, dark hair, dark eyes, very outspoken and Jane Seymour's like fair and just pale, and blue meek, eyes, very meek, very quiet, mm-hmm. doesn't speak unless spoken to. They're not just physical opposites, which they are. They're also personality opposites. And I think this is why Henry starts pursuing her because like he has this obsession yeah. with going after a woman. He's with this woman and then he wants to find her complete opposite. And he just does this yeah. all the time. He does this all the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a dick. <laughs> Anyway, um, 
So the progress, like the summer progress is over or whatever, and they go back home, back to like their regular court, and Jane is still one of Anne's ladies-in-waiting, and Henry is like openly courting her. And obviously Anne wants to like push this bitch out, get her out of this place mm-hmm. because she's she's kind of threatening. And Henry says no. He's like, usually you have the right to like choose your ladies-in-waiting as you want or like fire lady in waiting. Seems normal. <laughs> and he was like, no, you're not getting rid of her. Sorry about it. Henry gives Jane this locket <laughs> with like a picture of himself in it. So he'll <laughs> always be on her mind. This seems like middle school shit. I know. <laughs> he had done the same with Anne. Like he'd done the exact same, the locket and everything with Anne. So what did Anne fucking do? Yeah, no, when Anne saw it, <laughs> she was like, what was that around your neck? And opened it up and saw it was a locket with the king's picture on it. And she freaked the fuck out. And she rips it off, Jane's, like, a big-ass chain. They don't have, like... Little necklaces that are, like... No, this is, like, a chain. And and cut the fuck out of her finger Was it her it sixth too. finger? <laughs> no, fakeness. Fakeness. But Anne rips it off of Jane's neck and, like, fucks up both her hand and Jane's neck. And it just made me think of um, Formation. It's like, I'm so possessive, so I tear off your necklaces. Yeah! <laughs> I'm like, I'm giving Katie money right now. Mm, making it rain. <laughs> Except it's imaginary. <laughs> but I really think at this point, Anne she was just... She lost her fucking shit. She was afraid of being put aside for Jane. Yeah. Like, And so she lost her shit because she was afraid that Jane was going to take her place. Hashtag foreshadowing. It's also said that... At one point when Anne was pregnant, she walked in on Jane sitting on Henry's lap and, like, them kissing or whatever. And, like, she blamed her miscarriage on that shit. We'll get to that later, but... I mean, she felt like she was being pushed aside. Yeah. And she wasn't going to have this happen to her because this happened to the woman before her. So, I think she was definitely nervous about, like... Of course, that was obviously in her mind, but Jane wasn't the absolute threat. Yeah, no, she had she had tons of threats. Yet. She had tons of threats. No, but I'm just saying that like she wasn't the nail in the coffin yet. Yeah. But guess what? She's pregnant again. Yeah, pregnant. Okay, so Anne's obviously a fertile myrtle. Boop boop. Which like makes me think that the kale blood thing is possibly true. Because she's has no problem getting pregnant. She can get it's pregnant just, all the live long day. It's carrying it to turn. Yeah. It makes sense. She's like telling everybody to listen. All right, guys, this time, definitely a boy. I can feel 100%. it in my bones. Jesus told me, <laughs> definitely a boy. And what's ironic is, is that Catherine of Aragon dies around this time. On, on Janu- Janu- yeah, January 7th, 1536, Catherine of Aragon dies. So there's rumors that Anne poisoned her, but oh my God. So they, they, <laughs> no. did, they, did, they did a Renaissance autopsy, which, <laughs> oh my God, that would be like such a good like TV show. Like one of those like oh. true crime TV shows, oh but like God. called Renaissance Autopsy. Cold. Oh my God. Cold Justice Renaissance Edition. Yield. <laughs> yield Justice. <laughs> boom, boom. Uh oh, we need to copyright that before yeah, someone steals it. We do. It. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag yield justice. Anyway, but no, so they did um, yield autopsy on her, said that her heart was blackened, so they claimed that somebody poisoned her, which now we know, oh, she just had cancer. Yeah. Like, and so the, I, I think we discussed that in our Catherine yeah. Aragon episode is that it was most likely cancer because the way that everything broke down, it was cancer. But anyway, Anne and Henry. Act like it was party in the USA, except again, ye old England. <laughs> hey, it's a party in ye old England. Hey. Oh my God. They wore, compose yourself, they wore yellow in celebration, like head to toe, them and Elizabeth. Were so apparently, yellow. this wasn't supposed to be in like. In their eyes, they weren't celebrating. They were like, oh, yellow is the color no, of mourning. I don't buy Spain. that. For, no, I don't buy that for a hot second. I don't either. I don't think they said that either. I don't no, think they tried to pretend like... that was like they... Like, that was Some the people thing. try... Yeah, like, so um, So they wore yellow and had to toe in celebration. But some people try to say, oh, no, yellow is the color of mourning in Spain. No, it fucking wasn't. I haven't found that <laughs> anywhere. They were not <clears throat> at all trying to honor her. They were dancing on her fucking grave is what they were doing it was so disrespectful but so they had this big party and a big feast and henry was carrying around little elizabeth and introduced like chapuy the spanish ambassador said that like he was parading around the little bastard like just (laughs) 
And if anybody that would look, he was like, have you met my daughter Elizabeth? Isn't she gorgeous? Oh, you know? And, and I mean, at this point, she's, I mean, she's pregnant. Her rival's dead. Everything's like in place. So of course and they're going to party. Henry says, God be praised. We are free from war. Which meant like the Spanish aren't going to come and attack him now over a dead woman. You no, know? They're not. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. So here's another interesting thing that happened in Henry VIII's life. And he had this jousting accident on... the. Let, no, let's stop and say, this jousting accident is a fucking game changer. Yes. Agreed. Yes. Absolutely. Do you agree that this is like, that he had brain damage, permanent brain okay. damage from this? So I'm going to I'm gonna name drop my friend Miriam. I don't want to tell you up too much, Miriam, because I know you listen, but she works at MD Anderson mm-hmm. and she's curing cancer. So applause. Good job, Miriam. Um, Hi, we, Miriam. of course, we're nerds. Yeah. And I was sitting there talking to her about it and she literally was like, no. It's very likely that he got into an accident. He hurt his leg. We have that documented. Like, he yeah. he hurt himself, and that could cause an infection. And that infection could cause a hemorrhage in your brain. Yeah. And that hemorrhage in your brain could make you go crazy. Well, so... And so the thing is, is, like, January 7th, he's throwing Elizabeth to everybody, trying to see who loves... You know, he's in love with Anne. He has this jousting accident... On the Two 24th. and a half weeks later, yeah. like not that far later, and all of a sudden, things also change. So let's this jousting accident. He was on a big ass horse, like a war horse. He was in full armor. Like, yeah, he was dressed like, to the nines. Go to the Tower of London and see like his armor. This shit weighs a ton, you mm-hmm. know. The horse he falls down in full armor. The horse falls mm-hmm. on him. This big ass war horse. He. He was unconscious for two hours, um, which then with, again, ye old medicine, they're just like, uh, should uh, we bleed him? Like, what yeah, do we do? We put leeches on him? That's yeah. Good idea. <laughs> but somebody, it definitely got back to Anne. It was either her father, brother, or uncle, the Duke of Norfolk. Somebody told him. And she had a fucking meltdown as you, I mean, well, look, look. And let's, this is let's like talk the about the downfall of it all. Let's talk about this. Like, let's say Henry had died. What, what would Anne? What would have happened to Anne and Elizabeth? Like, the Spanish could have very easily came in, claimed England in the name of Mary, and executed Anne. So of course she's having a fucking meltdown. You know, yeah. Every uh, the all of their plans had were burning to the ground at this point. But <clears throat> he wakes up. Anne has a miscarriage on January 29th. Well, I mean, she was stressed the fuck out. No, but listen to this. Listen, Are you ready, Nathan? Are you ready to listen to this? I don't know if I am. January 29th is also the day of Catherine of Aragon's fucking funeral. Fucking. She miscarried on the day of her enemy's funeral. You can't write this shit. That's why. This I, is real. That's why I don't think it's that kill disease shit. I think it's damn karma. I don't know, guys. <laughs> and it's not. I don't and it's not. It's, know. it's not the fault of Anne, and it's not the fault of Catherine. It's the fault of Henry. Well, Henry, when he was told, he said, "Like it seems, God won't grant me male children." Uh, duh. Maybe you should stop now. And they told him that the fetus <laughs> appeared to be a boy, but how would they know? I mean, she was only like three or four months pregnant. Would they really... At this point, if he thinks that he's not going to have a little boy, why doesn't he just follow through with the acts of secession and be like, Elizabeth I is the queen? Well, because... Done. Well, we've talked about this. <laughs> only two generations before him, really only one generation before him, there was the Wars of the Roses. Yeah. Which was all, you know, about who would inherit or anything. And it had been... The last time a woman had tried to inherit the throne um, in in England, it was an absolute... I mean, it started the Plantagenet line, but it was an absolute shit show, and it was called the Anarchy. So he... He is trying to do right by his country, but he becomes a megal- megalomaniac in the act of it. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So. Gloom um, and doom. <laughs> Anne was like sitting up in bed right after the miscarriage, being like telling anybody that would listen, like, next time. Definitely next time. It's going to be get a boy. This boo next time. I can feel it next time. Henry comes to see her soon after that, and they got into a fight. Yeah. And Anne tells him that, like, look. You had the big fall, and I thought you were dead. And then I saw you with another woman, and I couldn't handle this. I couldn't handle seeing you love somebody else. He tells her, "I will speak to you when you're up." And have you ever had like a significant other be so angry at you that they're not even yelling, and you get like chilled to the bone? They're quiet. I will speak to you when you're up. 
Ooh. <laughs> and then he left the room and he told his advisors, like, I'm not going to have any sons with her. Yeah, and so by this time, and he's, that was, he's telling Cromwell that, it's done. hey, can we get a divorce with her? It's done. This mm-hmm. is January. Henry starts to, like, tell Cromwell, like, serious invest- seriously investigate how I can get a divorce from her. But it's weird, because even though he's doing that behind doors, like in the general public, he's still pushing that act of succession law. He's still pushing everybody to take the oath. He's still telling everybody that he's Anne's so boo. into himself that he's just because it's fucking pride. He's he doesn't want to tell everybody. Look, I think I made a mistake. You know, I it's d- fucked up. <laughs> so Henry's like, look, I used to sleep with Anne's sister. So why don't you see if you can get me a divorce on those grounds? Because like it's like the reverse of him and Catherine of Aragon. Well, it's like, very yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, like I, he, she slept with my brother. Exactly. I slept with her sister. It's like the reverse. But Cromwell saw what had happened to Cardinal Wolsey, and he was like, "Oh, so Car- no!" <laughs> Cardinal Wolsey took so long getting the divorce and never like really rose to it. I believe that Cromwell was like, "I'm not fucking around with this. I am getting this done as quickly as possible, and Tonight. as soon as I find out a way to do it, it's." He's like, I'm not taking seven years for this shit. I'm taking yeah, a month. He, he doesn't want to die. <laughs> so Cromwell starts to question the ladies of Anne's household to try to find something a little bit dangerous. Most people know that John Wilkes Booth, assassin of President Abraham Lincoln, was an actor. Yet few know much about his brief yet stunning stage career. In fact, Booth hailed from the most famous theatrical dynasty in the country, and his crime would have devastating personal and professional repercussions for his relatives. Behind the tale of Lincoln's assassination is a family drama in which politics pit brother against brother, as does the pressure to protect the family name. I'm Gavin Whitehead host of The Art of Crime, a history podcast about the unlikely collisions between true crime and the arts. Join me for a special two-part series on John Wilkes Booth, the finale of our ongoing season about artists involved in assassinations. We'll hear how Booth rose to fame in the shadow of his superstar father, how he led a conspiracy to assassinate the president, and how his offense altered what it meant to be a Booth. Follow The Art of Crime wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, Matt, did you know that wombats poop cubes? Nope, never heard that before. Did you know the unicorn is the national animal of Scotland, Ken? I didn't know, nor do I care. Neil, did you know that Liechtenstein is the only doubly landlocked country in Europe? Jeff, isn't that an American pop artist? Well, actually, it's both. If you want to learn things like that and more, join us each week on Triviality, a pub trivia-style game show podcast where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. Listen in each week to answer general knowledge trivia alongside exciting guests from around the world. And we're here too. Join us every Tuesday for new hour-long episodes of Triviality, plus tons of extra theme content on everything from The Office and Lord of the Rings to science and geography. And sometimes we even do sports. Find us on all your preferred podcast apps and take part in the fun of playing bar trivia without the need to wear pants. Real mature, Jeff. Forget it, Neil. It's Triviality. Like we said, Cromwell started to talk to, like, the ladies-in-waiting and looking for, like, some damning evidence. He's looking for some dirt. So he turns to this dude named Henry Norris, and he was engaged to Anne's cousin, Madge. The one that had been the mistress to the king. Madge slash Mary Shelton. So (laughs) the rumors, he didn't, like, interrogate Henry Norris right away. Because Henry Norris was, um, he was on the king's, uh... What was it called? I can't remember the name of, like, his job title. Basically, he tended to the king while the king was, like, taking a shit and taking baths and getting dressed and stuff. His chambermate. I mean, pretty that's much. The, that's like, the feminized version. Yeah, of but, like, he. So he was tight, like, white with the king and had been for ages. But no, so apparently there had been this exchange between Anne and Henry Norris. Henry Norris had been engaged to Mad Shelton for quite some time. And. One day he was, like, calling on Madge and, like, just flirting with all the ladies at court. And Anne was like, dude, when are you gonna marry Madge? And Henry says, I would tarry a bit. Which was yield English for, like, girl, I I still got some wild oats to sow, Mm -hmm. you know? And Anne said the dumbest fucking thing with her big fucking mouth. She said, 
you look for dead men's shoes. And what she meant is, like, if the king died tomorrow, the reason you haven't married Madge is because if the king died tomorrow, you want to marry me. Bad move. Oh, my God. That was the dumbest thing she's ever said in her Bad life. Bad move. It's- and as soon as she said it, she realized, too, and she panicked. And she, like, called for her chaplain, and she made, like, Henry Norris swear on a Bible that she was a good woman and loved the king, and she sweared on... I mean, talk about somebody trying Ugh. to do some fucking damage control after you realize that... That was people- her downfall was her fucking big-ass mouth. You don't... Oh, my God, bitch. Everyone... These people are getting beheaded for... S- like, the whole thing about the oath is it's illegal to talk about the death of the king. You just talked about the death of the king. Yeah, we don't even... We talked about in previous episodes, you don't say anything bad about the king. Because yeah. you could get killed. And, and then... she's doing that. So, there's also, her like, brother. her brother, George Boleyn. What? And... Her brother? Is that yeah. a typo? No, no, <laughs> no, must no, be mistaken. no. These bitches were weird, and they tried to throw her ass under the bus. And everyone's like, wait, 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 whoa, whoa. They're way too close to each other. There's no way that they're, they're, no, no. The whole, like, viewpoint behind that is, like, the king can't get her pregnant. Like, the king sucks in bed and, like, get it up or whatever. So she turned to her brother. Because if she got pregnant by her brother, like, if she got pregnant by one of these other dudes, like, they could be like, hmm, the baby looks like him. But if she got pregnant by her brother. It would look I like mean, her. Yeah, or it's not uncommon for or children deformed. to look. <laughs> yeah, it's not uncommon for children to look like <coughs> their their uncles, you know. So that was that Fake story. News. Fake news. And then, oh my God, Mark Smeaton. Hashtag poor baby Mark Smeaton. So he was. I read that he was only like a few years younger than her, but, but he, he was, was completely innocent. Completely, they were all completely not, innocent. Yes, they were. But, but he, he was, was a noble. He, he had no royal line. So Mark Smeaton was um, a court musician. and Sounds he, like my kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like, he came in and out of the Queen's chambers at all times at night. But it's like, they that was really common back then. Like, you would just have you and your ladies reading the Bible. Well, you wanted some music. You couldn't turn on the radio. You'd like, <laughs> call the musician to come and pay, play music in the background. So what they but, did was bring Mark in for questioning. And since... He, I mean, the difference between questioning, um, it means interrogation. Yeah, questioning means interrogation. It means Guantanamo Bay. They fucking (laughs) tortured him because they couldn't torture any of the other men in question because they're royal. So they already had they had suspicion on Henry Norris and they had suspicion on George Boleyn. Henry Norris was a nobleman, and George Boleyn was the was royalty basically. And so you can't torture those people. Mark Smeaton's a nobody. Mark Smeaton's a musician. He, like, has to dance and sing for people to give him coins. So He's I'm sure nobody. they did some really nasty shit so to So they him. bring him in. Yeah, they said It's that, a forced confession. Basically, that is yeah. That is illegal and would, uh, by all means, in today's realm, be like, no, Yo, that's Yo, let's start the hashtag, hashtag poor baby Mark. <laughs> hashtag poor baby Mark. Um, and the end, he admitted to sleeping with the queen. He implicated George Boleyn. Henry Norris, and these other two guys, Francis Weston and William Breton. Yeah, there's so much stuff that you can read about interrogating people that aren't noble. Ooh. It's it's pretty brutal. So like, I can't... I, the, they're going to get a confession out of you, but it's going to be don't, false. We don't know what they did, but I can't watch when they interrogate Mark Smeaton and the Tudors mm-hmm. because they, they start it by, like, putting this contraption around his eye and that's when I just go, okay, fast okay, forward. I'm done. I'm My done. imagination will fill in the rest. Fast forward. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> this was enough. This was enough to bring Anne down. But I mean, oh my God, how do you go from loving so much? Like, I am this so obsessed woman. with you for 10 years. And then. To flip a switch. Just like. All right, basically signing her death warrant. That's why I think that jousting accident. Well, I think it was a lot of things, but I think, yeah, after that jousting accident, it just he flipped. became just, like, paranoid. Like, mm-hmm. he just, he, Cromwell comes to him and is like, this is the, this is what we want to investigate about Anne. And Henry was just like, cool, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh. And, like, um, there was one podcast I was listening to. I can't remember which one it is, but they mention later in life whenever his the second wife that he beheads Catherine Howard um, when he finds out she's been unfaithful because she actually was 
he was irrational. He was like, bring her here my, and I'll kill her myself and this and that. With Anne, he was just like, cool, I'll sign your warrant, off to party. Like, he with was Anne, just... he knew he was guilty of making a bad decision. With Catherine Howard, I think he may have known. He realized she was really guilty, was whereas guilty. Anne was. Anyway, we've digressed. So he's given the green light to arrest the queen, and... She's arrested on May 2nd and brought to the tower. Yeah, when they, um, so they, they the roll tower her up. Of London. Yeah, the Tower of London. <laughs> they roll her up to the tower, not Trump Tower. <laughs> yeah, no, no, thank you. <laughs> they roll her That's up to the tower bad. in a barge. She gets there, and she asks the, um... Shall like, I stay in a dungeon? The governor of the tower, Kingston. I don't remember what his actual... Let's just call him the governor of the tower, because I can't remember his actual title right now. But um, she's like, should I stay in the dungeon? And he's like, no, you're going to stay in the rooms that you stayed in for your coronation. And she says, it's too good for me. And so a lot of people are like, oh, that's her admitting her guilt. But no, I think she's just stressed the fuck out, and she's kind of losing her... She's losing her shit a little bit, you know? I would be too. Your life's ending. I just um, like... <laughs> I mean... Ugh, I can't. I think um, she was trying to play the pious Catherine of Aragon card. Oh, I don't think so. I think she was just like when she said it's, it. When she said it's too good for me, she the whole ride, the whole barge ride up there. She thought I'm going to be put in the dungeon. I'm going to be put in the dungeon. And then whenever they said no, you're going to these luxurious AF rooms, she just it was just like a relief, like a G, like a knee jerk reaction relief. Yeah. Do you, you know what I mean? She was cuckoo for Cocoa Buffs. Bitch was losing her <laughs> mind. Um, so, they said that she would go from like one minute she'd be demanding to speak to the king, and then the next minute she'd be like, but I'm innocent, I'm innocent. And then the next minute she'd be like crying hysterically, and the next minute she'd be laughing hysterically. Call me the next time whenever you know you're about to die. And how you're going to act. Yeah. Yeah. No one doesn't. So. She was put on trial and uh, was uh, also Mark Smeaton, George Boleyn, Henry Norris, Francis. Hey, all those bitches. So first, all those guys were put on trial. Obviously, Irwin's guilty. Because <laughs> the king's running the court. Yeah. George and Anne were put on, like, so those guys were put on trial and it was like a trial for non-royal people or whatever. And then George and Anne were put on trial for royal people. And I think it's a really good... I, I really like the show Wolf Hall when she's on trial and Cromwell is like, I don't fucking know. There's no precedence for how to trial try a queen of England. Right? You know? There's Nobody's ever done that before. And come on. It, it wasn't really a trial for any of them. They were all going to be found... It was a kangaroo court. You know? Yeah, like exactly. everybody is exactly. going to be found guilty because the king has already decided... I got to get rid of this wife, and I don't care how it happens, you know? So all the men were charged with the same sort of crimes, except Henry Norris. And he was charged with sodomy, you know, because you just throw that in. <laughs> so I think he was charged with sodomy on top of everything else. Like, yeah, everybody yeah. was charged with sleeping with the king, the queen, not the king, obviously. <laughs> Everyone was charged with sleeping with the queen and plotting the king's death. And Henry Norris, on top of everything, was charged with sodomy. I didn't do a deep dig into what he did to piss everyone else off so bad to, like, also get that. I think it was more like back then being, like, in England until, like, the 60s or the 70s being gay was, like, a crime. Yeah. So that was just, like, showing, like, the people that the queen coerces with are even, they're treasonous, they're this, they're this, and they're gay. Like, <laughs> it was just, like, basically just to throw yes. more shit on it, you know? <laughs> exactly. So Anne's uncle, the Duke of Norfolk, presided over the trial. So he was the one that had to, like, actually say, we found you guilty and we're going to put you to death. Her fucking uncle. That's, like, that's brutal. Can you even wrap your mind? I mean, like, maybe I've that's just brutal. got, like, a great family life. I can't, <laughs> I can't imagine any of my uncles ever telling me, like... You're going to die. Uh, Bye. Yep, you know? Exactly. And she was sentenced by her uncle who presided over the whole fucking thing to being beheaded or burnt alive. At the king's <laughs> pleasure. Whichever one he decides. <laughs> um, Where was king, Henry? The king's pleasure. Where was the fucking king? Pleasuring that, himself. He was. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. So it's just sort of like um, there's no... Or at least I didn't find any great, like, documentation of exactly where Henry was. What I did find is, like, oh, he was at York Castle. Or, oh, he was at, like, he he wasn't, he wasn't there 
while the shit was hitting the fan. I read he was like in Greenwich or he was over he here. He was and... off. Basically, what I believe is he was off um, partying until it was done. Yep. I know he wasn't. I don't want to talk about Jane Seymour too much. Jane Seymour was kept away at um, Chelsea Castle, I think it was. He, just like with when he was divorcing Catherine, he didn't want anybody like focusing on Anne. Mm-hmm. So when he was killing Anne, he didn't want anyone focusing on Jane. So Jane was like hit away and he was not with her. I mean, that's kind of what he's done before, He was just partying it up, waiting for her to die, you know? And if he had really thought the love of his life had slept with, like, all these dudes, wouldn't he be mourning a little bit? He should be, but he's not. He's a Uh, psychopath. So her her execution is set up and... The men were executed on May 17th, 1536. It's debated if, like, she could have actually watched. Like, um, so we don't know. If she watched her them execute her Her brother, brother and her friends. These guys were her friends. And they were all being executed for being her friends. Yeah. You know? And her musician. Like, that dude even had a choice where he was going to be, you know, the queen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> killing me, um, Smalls. Killing I think, me. I think she would have felt really guilty obviously so they were all beheaded and which thank god they were beheaded because at first they were all going to be hung drawn and quartered which we've discussed before awful but instead it was all commuted to beheading Mm. which gross um (laughs) so she was to be executed the next day at 9 a.m so anne had gives her final confession she gives it to Thomas Cranmer, which is the Archbishop of Canterbury. Who she had a big part in promoting him. He because yeah. he was um, a Protestant like supporter. At this time, if you were guilty and you did a confession, you wouldn't pretend to be innocent. Because they honestly thought, if I lie at my last confession, God's going to kill me. I'm definitely I'm going, going to, to hell. hell. I'm definitely going to hell if I lie at my last confession. But at her last confession, she was like, I'm, I'm innocent. She. I think it was like, I'm guilty of a lot of things, but not of these things. That She was like, I'm guilty of being proud. I'm guilty of this. I'm guilty. But that's, but yeah, but I've... I've I didn't do that. What did she... It was something like, I've never sinned against the king with my body or something like that. Mm. So that raised eyebrows and Cranmer wrote to Cromwell being like, I'm kind of shook by her last confession. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how I feel about this. He tell Kramer has to give Anne the bad news that also BT dubs Henry has deemed your marriage um, null and void. Y'all were never actually married. Uh, so on top of everything, your daughter's now a, a bastard. bastard. Mm-hmm. But this unfortunately ugh, breaks my heart. Couldn't he have done that after Anne was killed? Because like this Just gives wait her, a couple days. This gives her false hope. She's like, oh well, then I couldn't have cheated on him if he wasn't my husband. Maybe. Is he going to send me in a, to a nunnery? What torture? And what they're, torture? And they're like, oh, honey, no, you're still, you're still going to die. <laughs> uh, this is like, fuck you, Henry. Fuck that face. I want to fucking fucking slap that. <laughs> like, I hate nope. Henry VIII. That, me too. <laughs> so anyway. she, so May 18th rolls around. She stayed up all night praying. I mean, how do you sleep the night before you? I mean, you're going to be executed? sleeping for the rest of your life. Well, I mean, you're dead, but you're. you're... But they don't have Ambien back then. Yeah. How are you going to sleep? You're not going to be able to. I wouldn't want to sleep anyway. I'd be like, these are my last hours. Why would I waste them sleeping? That Kingston guy, the governor, no constable, not governor, constable of the tower, <laughs> comes up at nine a.m. and she assumes like he's going to lead her to her execution, and she's dressed, she's ready, she is like, let's do this shit. She's ready to go. And he's like, I got some bad news. (laughs) Henry has decided to, the English way to get beheaded was like, put your head down on a block and a guy with an axe. Um, But that was like, oh, people, it went south. Death. So he had planned this to get the best swordsman in France to come there. Yeah, so she would have her head cut off by a sword instead of like the English axe. So anyway, he's like, this guy is delayed from France. So your execution is going to be at noon instead, which three hours doesn't seem like a big difference to us. But I'm sure when you're like waiting about to, to die, die. <laughs> and she's disappointed and she goes, I, I hear that you told me that I'm not going to be dead till noon. And I am upset because I thought by noon I would be dead and quote unquote past my pain. 
And Kingston, I guess, it didn't know what to say. Yeah, he was point. just like, he felt awkward. He was like, uh. It's not going to hurt. It'll be over quick. Yeah, he was like, oh, no, it won't hurt. It'll be over in a second. And this is when Anne says her famous line. She goes, um, I hear the swordsman is very good, and I do have a little neck. And then she puts her hands up around her neck, and, ah, oh, that kills me. It says she, it's a, the quote is, she laughed heartily. So I wonder if that's just like a, ha, 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 or if it's like a, ha, 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 ha. And I think, it's, I think, that's yes, what I think that's, that's what, what I'm thinking it, it was. Exactly. I think that was a great Amble <laughs> impression. Like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. And... Y'all, she, I, I think she just fucking lost it. Can you Can't, fucking blame her? Nope. I mean, I just lost it in the moments that I thought I was able to. Uh-uh. <laughs> and then Kingsman came back at noon and she was like, all right, ready, Freddy, let's go. Ugh. Let's on with the next one. Let's do this shit. And he was like, hey, so the swordsman is still not here. So we're going to do this tomorrow instead. What a pain in the ass. I, mm. I can't, I can't. <laughs> and one thing I do want to talk about the only place I found this was on the Amberlynn files <laughs> it's a really it's a really great resource thorough. they're very um, thorough somebody send us if you have found this anywhere else or if you have a correction but I did find it on there that there were and supporters at the tower of like protesting her being but if you think death. about it if you really honestly think about it they had seen Catherine of Aragon get pushed out by this man. And now they're seeing Anne Boleyn getting pushed out by this man. So obviously she has supporters being like, maybe it's not the women. Maybe it's the man. Yeah. And but they, they couldn't directly speak out about the king. Kingston, they could support her. Kings, like That's just taken from like a letter that Kingston wrote to Thomas Cromwell. Being yeah, like, he mentioned that there was a crowd being around like, the um, tower. Not everybody's as happy about this as y'all are toting. But um, it didn't change anything. I just thought it was worth noting. No, Because <laughs> I've never heard that before in anything I've so, listened to. So, the next day, uh, the swordman arrived. He arrived. And everyone else was executed in that English act style that we were talking about. Mm-hmm. That's really not that So, pretty. Anne was being executed in the French style, which is with the sword. And the difference is you kneel on your knees and you sit, like, upright. So, I read that the sword that they, they used. Huh, this is making me emotional. It's called the Sword of Calais. Because he was French, yeah. the swordsman. So she's going, going, back, back to Aww. Calais, Calais. Because that's probably where they consummated their marriage, too, mm-hmm. in Calais. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Fuck my life. I think that's that depressing. was a very uh, symbolic People thing. like to read into why did Henry choose this. And it's like, oh, it was like a last respect to her. Or he went, I think it was because... I think it was like, oh, you think you're so fucking French? You're always Here's doing... your French sword. Die by the French sword. Exactly. I think that's what it was. That's what I think it was. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> and he did pay him well, though. He paid him, he paid the swordsman 23 pounds. Like $10,000. Yeah, which is about $10,000. <laughs> and for, uh, what, like 30 seconds of work? Right. But Anne the entire time is like walking down the scaffold and she's looking up at the tower a lot of people did say that she looked gorge she looked i heard the most beautiful she'd ever looked but you know like that that look of fright must really like do wonders for the skin (laughs) (laughs) maybe she was secretly hoping that it would all be cut off at the last that's what um a lot of things i've read is that she's looking back at the tower just hoping somebody will come out and be like jk you're going to a nunnery like I don't know. Um, though she did tell one of her ladies, she was like, I know I'm dying today. Like, she knew. But, like, <sighs> it's just human nature or, like, reflex, you know? Like, look back to, like, maybe somebody's going to do something, you mm-hmm. know? So she makes her final speech. And there was a thousand people there. Yeah. There were tons of people there. I also read that she <clears throat> wrote a letter to the king beforehand. Mm-hmm. And she signed it, The Lady in the Tower. Yeah. Which was the book that I read. So yeah. I, I got to give a shout out to that. But anyway, she makes her last speech. And the gist of it is here, like, I know I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. <laughs> I'm not going to protest my innocence. And she was basically like, the king's always been a great friend of mine and so obviously so don't the people, say anything bad about him the people around her are like again what everybody they like, thought that she was gonna protest it and be like i'm innocent but she was or like, yes. or be like i did it i did it. because all the men that got executed that was customary again mm. like we talked about giving your last confession i mean she definitely had her daughter in mind and she went out there and she was just like the king's a good king i'm here to die 
Let's get the show on the road, basically. So, Henry wasn't there when it happened. Of course not. He was off and partying or whatever. She was dressed like a fabulous queen that she was. Yeah. And her ladies-in-waiting helped her remove her jewelry, her headpiece, and all those fancy robes. She wore ermine, which is like a type of fur that only... Like, people of, like, the highest ranks wore. So she was working it. It was like, she walked out there dressed like a queen to remind everybody, I am queen up until the last second of my life. Even though my marriage has been an old shh, 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 I'm queen. So she also wore a red petticoat underneath. Which is noteworthy because red. That's what a cardinal wears. Red is the color of martyrs. Yep. So it was sort of like. I, I don't think that was coincidence. I don't think no, she just happened no, to wear that was, a red I petticoat think that, that was day. very symbolic. Of I think what she everything was Anne ever did. That was, was her with final fuck you thought. <laughs> yeah, it was like fine. I'm a martyr. So she know? knelt down and she was blindfolded, and this kills me. So some people say that she just lost it this after point. they blindfolded her. Like I would have too. Yeah, I would have too. Um, it um, would have it would have happened. But some okay, some people say that the crowd knelt down and. What I really think happened is probably they blindfolded her and she started wailing and then the crowd recognized, oh shit, she's really fucking innocent. Yeah. And they all knelt down to give their respect to her. I, I, I do like how that's represented in the Tudors when everybody knelt. Like the, what I've read is that everybody knelt down except for like a few dukes and shit like that. Um, whether it happened or not, if anybody has information on that, let us know. Um, if you were there, please let us know how it went down. If you, but, <laughs> um, that that was a beautiful representation in the show, though it did bother me in the tutors that they didn't blindfold her. Her like so after she got blindfolded, she just started like saying over and over like Jesus Christ, I give my soul, God accept my soul, have mercy on my soul, just over and over and over. And then the swordsman, um, this really happened. It's represented in like every reenactment of Anne being executed the swordsman takes out his sword he runs over to like one side of the scaffold and says like boy hand me my sword in French and so she looks the way of where her, his voice was coming from and so while she's looking the opposite way and her neck's completely exposed that's when he just whoosh that's the noise of a sword cutting off someone's head <laughs> <laughs> oh, my heart is breaking <laughs> So it was done. It was over. It was quick. Um, and so afterwards, and in a second, it was over. But <sighs> the Anne aftermath, was, uh, um, she was she was very hastily buried. This pisses me off. Like she was put in like a narrow coffin. Like the coffin they put her in couldn't. Like there was nowhere to put her head. There's no room. Yes, it like didn't work. And so like her ladies had to like smush her in there because they were like, no, we're doing this. Y'all can't do this. We're doing this. And her and her brother um, were buried together, but just kind of lacklusterly. Like, it was not... She didn't give a royal burial at all. Obviously. But, so, like, the aftermath of her is that her, of her being executed and all this, like, her daughter was no longer a princess. She was, like, Lady Elizabeth, like, happened to marry. (laughs) Anne was the first English queen to be executed, but not the last. Spoiler alert. England stayed, broken up with Rome. You know. yeah, they're no longer associated. And you could say Anne started the Reformation in England. And then Mr. Pussy Pants Henry Pussy remarried Pants. like 10 fucking days later. Like, like, redi- like, when he married so quick later, he was like, oh, my council wanted me to. Like, like he had he to make excuses. So weak. He is He's so such a weak. Fucking coward. Weak. But you know who became the most famous English monarch ever? Let me guess. Anne's fucking daughter how is that for revenge Revenge. elizabeth brought them into what is it called oh the golden age okay so what i'm gonna say is is that henry was so obsessed with finding a great man to run the country but what he got was honestly two great women that could have run a country and i think elizabeth the first obviously is Arguably the best queen ever. He wanted a son, spelled S-O-N, for England. Instead, he got a son, spelled S-U-N, for High England. five. Clink it, girl. Clink it. Love you guys. Thanks for Cheers, listening. Cheers, bitches. Have you ever wondered what the science says about certain foods, products, or treatments? 
Does chiropractic actually work? Should I only buy organic foods? Are GMOs actually harmful? Is adrenal fatigue real? We've got you covered. The goal of the Unbiased Science Podcast is to dispel misinformation and misconceptions across an array of science and public health topics. We love to debunk myths and help arm our listeners with information so they can make evidence-based decisions. Make sure to tune in to the Unbiased Science Podcast to get all of your questions answered.